Each and every Monday is $9 Monday at both wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com. When all daily picks packages are priced at only $9, including 5% best bets, normally priced at $35. As an added bonus, any picks packages loaded early for overnight Tuesday or action during the week will also be priced at nine bucks until midnight on Monday. So make sure to take advantage of getting these $25 and $35 picks for only $9 before the clock strikes 12 and they return to regular price. And a very happy Monday to you here. Welcome to Madness. That's right. March Madness is upon us, guys. And uh, you are watching the College Basketball Tip-Off Show powered by wagertalk.com. A very special edition here today as uh, we are a couple of days away from uh, total madness, total craziness. Uh, There is a lot of information. There is a, a lot of different ways to tackle Uh, what's going to happen this week. Uh, We are going to spend some time today talking a little bit about the trends and angles, TNA, uh, as we like to refer to it uh, here at Wager Talk. Uh, When it comes to the brackets, uh, you know, what should you be looking at? What shouldn't you be looking at? Well, we've got two of the best TNA guys at Wager Talk here for you today to break down some of these angles and trends as the pen Ralph Michaels in the house, as is Dwayne Bryant, ready to roll here today, guys. Uh, Madness, one of our favorite times of year, but uh, there are certainly some trends and some angles you guys should be aware of here before diving in and placing any wagers, and uh, these two guys are going to point us in the right direction. We also have an amazing opportunity for you guys to partner up with not only Ralph, but Dwayne coming up. We will get to that. But Ralph Michaels, we love madness. Welcome in here, uh, my friend. It's all about trends and angles here for this show, and nobody knows them better than you do. So dive in. To start us off here. What are some of the things we should be aware of here? Well, the first thing I want to preface is this. You know, Dwayne and I talk about this as as do most people that use trends, angles, or systems. You're never going to base a play on a trend or an angle or a system. It may help you make a play stronger. It may keep you off a play. But remember, it's just one part, should be at least one part of your handicapping repertoire. I want to start off my first segment with just some general information. What have favorites done in March Madness? Doesn't matter if you're a one seed, a four seed, or an eight seed. Favorites in March Madness going back to 2017 have hit 46.4%. Again, not a wow number, but you should note that dogs have hit a much higher level. So favorites, 46.4%. One subset where favorites have struggled even more, favorites since 2017 in March Madness with a line between five and a half and nine and a half. I broke them down into five point segments and favorites in that role have hit 43.6%. And totals, when a favorite is of between 5 and 10, have hit 39.2% to the over. And how about those 20-point favorites? Usually it only occurs in round number one. 10 and 9 since 2017, 52.6%. But listen to this. When a team has been a 20-point favorite in March Madness, they have gone 5-14 and 14 over under. That is 73.7% to the under. And totals overall in March Madness, 45.1% to the over. So that means 54.9% of every March Madness game has gone under the total. Last thing I want to share, this is on my Twitter, guys, if you want a little quicker look, at CalSportsLV. It is the number one seeds from the last five years. 
we get so enamored with being the number one seed and these teams can't fail. Well, we're going to see a chart here. And did you guys know that number one seeds for the last last year, the number one seeds went one in 10 ATS the first three rounds. Hmm. If you look on the very bottom of the chart in the first round, number one seeds back to 2017 have gone eight and 12 ATS. And in round two, eight and 11 ATS. That is a combined 16 and 23 guys with that number one seed in the first two rounds. If you want to bet that number one seed, you are paying a premium with the line. Yeah, no, and again, if we if we know uh, the book, certainly uh, no. But those are some intriguing uh, numbers there, Ralph, to get us uh, started. And uh, Dwayne, I, I know a lot of guys that approach March Madness, they love uh, splitting games in half, right? First half, second half, full game. Uh, talk to us a little bit about maybe uh, approaching uh, totals from, let's say, a first half standpoint. But first, I got to say, Ralph read my mind. Uh, he couldn't have started this show off any better because I was going to say the exact same thing. Uh, you should never base any bet on any one single trend, angle, piece of information, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it should just be part of your handicap for each game. Uh, it should either you know, solidify your stance on a game or maybe have you thinking the other way if it goes against what your original thought was. Uh, so if you followed my plays at any point during the last few college basketball seasons, uh, then you know I love betting the college hoops totals. And I have to be one of the few bettors on the entire planet uh, that prefers betting unders, especially first half unders. Uh, so I figured I'd start my NCAA tournament betting research with some data on first half unders. And here's what I found. Uh, since 2011, NCAA tournament games that start before 2 p.m. Eastern and have a first half total line of less than 70, those games have gone 55, 28, and 3, 66.3% to the under. In fact, first half unders in the NCAA tournament are 153, 109, and 5, 58.4% since 2018. Uh, so that's a large sample size and a largely profitable result for first half unders. And when those games are first four or round of 64 games, the results improve to 84, 57, and 2, 59.6% to the under. Uh, this is right up my alley. So you better believe I'm going to have more than my fair share of uh, first half underplays in this tournament. Uh, and this situation angle applies to uh, Furman, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland on Thursday. And on Friday, it applies to USC, Michigan State, and uh, Cal Santa Barbara and Baylor. And I, and I love that because it makes total sense, Dwayne, right? You got uh, 18, 19-year-old kids, new gyms, new arenas, uh, different schedule leading up to it. So uh, early on, might take them a little while to get their, uh, their footing. So I love those kinds of angles uh, that make total sense when you look at it uh, from above. And uh, Ralph, I know you got a few more uh, to throw our way when it comes to totals here in March Madness. One more thing I want to bring up. Dwayne and I are saying the exact same thing in two different ways. I may give an over-under total where the over number is first and the under number is second. Dwayne quoted some numbers where it's 55 and a number to the under. So his under number is, is stronger. So you might be hearing a bigger number first, but when Dwayne says to the under, that means it's an underplay. I am just in an, I'm an old man, routine, win, loss, win comes first, loss comes second, over, under, over comes first, under comes second. So just make sure you listen to the verbiage and not just listening to the number. Four quick situations looking at over unders. In March Madness, all my numbers in this section since 217. If a team has gone over two straight games, it's that simple. If you've gone over each of your first two March Madness games, you are 32 and 56, 36.4% to the over, a 65.6% .6 situation to the under. So very, very often or more often than not, a team does not go over three straight games. Back-to-back -back unders, not a wow number, Dwayne mentioned unders round one. I talked about how overall March Madness is an underplay. 
if teams are off back-to-back -back unders, it's gone over 70 times, under 60 times. So that's 53.8% to the over. How about incredibly high totals or how about low totals? With totals of 156 and a half or higher, we've had 12 overs and 28 unders. That is 70% to the under on those very high totals. And on very low totals of 124 and a half, mm. eight overs, one under, 89% to the over. So high totals have gone under, low totals have gone over, back-to-back -back overs have gone under, back-to-back -back unders have gone over. Just what you would expect, right, Joe? Yes, absolutely what you expect. Trying to get trying to work that out there. All I heard as you were saying that is St. Mary's, VCU, St. Mary's, VCU. But I'm with you there, Ralph. We're good to go there. Love that. Uh, and we've got a few other, uh, by the way, a couple of other uh, intriguing angles to keep a, a, a top of mind here, guys, as you are diving in. And before we uh, we talk a little bit about rest versus rust, I did mention the opportunity here for you guys to partner up with both Ralph and Dwayne. Together, every play, March Madness, all of their plays, guys, just 169. All you have to do is visit their pages at wagertalk.com and use that code MM169 on the screen there. MM169, that's $169, and that is entire, all of March Madness with Ralph and Dwayne coming your way, a two for one spot here, guys. I absolutely love it. Great opportunity to partner with both Ralph and Dwayne. And Dwayne, let's talk a little bit about some of these teams that may have gotten bounced early uh, in uh, conference tournament time. They've had some rest now versus some of the teams that they've played a lot of games over the last week, week and a half or so. How do you, uh, what are some of the angles we should know about when it comes to rest uh, versus rust here? Well, we do know that since some conference tournaments start a week or so earlier than others, uh, we do get some matchups to open the NCAA tournament in which one team has significantly more rest than its opponent. Um, it is a rest versus rust scenario, and I was curious which side benefited from that. Uh, you know, so I ran an SDQL query on teams playing their first game of the NCAA tournament in which they had at least six more days rest than their opponent. Now, these much more rested teams uh, have gone 11 and 9 straight up and 12 and 8, 60% against the spread over the last four tournaments. Uh, these games also went 13 and 7, 65% to the under. Uh, this applies to NC Asheville, UCLA on Thursday, and uh, Kennesaw State, Xavier, and the Iowa State game on Friday. And if our more rested team is the favorite, this angle improves to nine and three straight up, eight and four, 67% ATS, and 10 and two, 83% to the under. Uh, these more rested favorites allowed teams to shoot just 38% from the field and gave up just 58.2 points per game. Uh, so clearly, these rested teams, especially the favorites, they come to play, they bring really good defense with them. Uh, so that also looks like a pretty good spot uh, where you might want to think about taking the under on the underdogs team total. Uh, it should also be noted that the more rested teams that were heavy favorites of 20 points or more were a perfect 3-0 and straight up and against the spread. So if there's ever a time to lay a ton of points to open the NCAA tournament, it's when that favorite has significantly more rest. Great stuff there, uh, Dwayne. Absolutely fantastic. And, and Ralph, expanding on that, you got rest versus rust. You also have some teams that have been red hot down the stretch here. Uh, and other teams, well, mm, maybe uh, not so much. It's been a uh, rough last month of the season. So what are some of the trends regarding some teams that are hot versus those teams that are, whoo, uh, a little bit cold coming into the tournament? Well, Dwayne and I both looked at these situations differently. So there may be some overlap in information here. And none of these have a huge sample size. So again, that's one thing to note. Dwayne and I both give you systems or angles, and the more years it encompasses, the more plays it encompasses, a much stronger play. When things are seven and two or seven and three, you take them with a grain of salt, but I'm just wanting to make people aware of those situations. The first is teams off back-to-back -back losses. 
You made March Madness and you lost at least your last two games. It's only happened nine times the last three seasons. It's going to occur six times, five or six times this year. I think Nevada is the first team where it applies to in the playing game. Again, teams off back-to-back losses, 7-2, 78%. How about teams off back-to-back wins as an underdog? Well, going back to 2016, this has a larger sample size. Teams off back-to-back wins as a dog. So you won your conference semifinals. You won your conference finals. You were an underdog in each. Those teams have gone 28 and 17, 62.2%. It applies to one team, that is Southeast Missouri in the play-in. So keep an eye on them, a 62.2% system. Two off-the-wall ones that I really didn't have anywhere to throw them, so I threw them in here. Teams with a losing record, okay? You know, you weren't a favorite. You pulled the upsets to get to your conference finals. You won your conference tournament. Your win percentage is under 50%. Going back to 2012, there's only been 10 teams that's occurred to. Guess what? Those teams have gone 7-3 and three ATS. Who the hell wants to bet a team from the SWAC that has a losing record? Well, guess what? Texas Southern fits the bill this time. They play on March 15th in the play-in game. <laughs> and here's one that surprised me. It doesn't matter how long you handicap, guys. You have, a, you have something in your mind, unless you know the data. You know, I've sat and talked with a lot of astute handicappers, people that bet for a living like I do, and people that have been uh, knowledgeable in this game. And I can tell you that I've said this numerous times. When teams are playing Thursday, Saturday, or Friday and Sunday, I usually look for the better coach because they have the shorter turnaround. Your first game, you have four days to prep or five days. Your second game, you have one day to prep. So thinking is the better coach is the favorite? Well, not really. Teams with one day of rest that are a favorite have only gone 50 and 53. That's 48.5%. Again, it's not a wow number, but if you think they're the better coach and they're the favorite, it hasn't been the case. Again, 48.5% ATS for when you have one day rest and you're the favorite. That's some, uh, that's some great stuff there. And I noticed that uh, our uh, producer, our Robert, a Texas Southern uh, grad, uh, probably would have let you ramble on there, Ralph, for as long as you wanted since you were throwing uh, all sorts of congratulations there to him. Great job, Texas uh, Southern. Uh, Dwayne, uh, talk to us a little bit about that, keeping this uh, this rolling when it comes to momentum uh, for some teams here. And, you know, Ralph brought up Texas Southern as one team that just seems to be rolling right into uh, right into March Madness here. Do you have any other uh, trends or any other angles we should know about when it comes to momentum heading into March Madness? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people like to talk about momentum coming into this tournament. Uh, and so it made me curious if it's really as simple as just fading teams that are coming into the tournament off a couple losses or, or riding the teams that are coming into the tournament off a few wins. Uh, so I went to the database and I queried teams that were coming into the tournament off back-to-back losses, meaning they lost in their first game in their conference tournament, uh, and they also lost their last regular season game. Uh, these teams have actually proven to be great play on teams uh, recently, 10-1 uh, and one straight up, 9-2 and two against the spread in the last three NCAA tournaments. Uh, this will apply to Nevada, Illinois, Iowa, Baylor, Providence, and Kansas State. Uh, so it isn't just a case where we can fade the teams coming into the tournament on a losing skid. We actually should be backing these teams. Uh, and, and what about the teams that are coming into the tournament on a winning streak? I researched teams that are coming into the NCAA tournament off at least five straight wins. Uh, so these are teams that won their conference tournaments and probably a game or two to end the regular season. Uh, and over the last four NCAA tournaments, uh, teams coming into the tournament off at least five straight straight up wins were only 33 and 43 straight up, but 43, 31 and 1, 58 percent against the spread. Hmm. Uh, so these teams have also been profitable. And if our hot team is a double digit favorite uh, in their NCAA tournament opener, they improved to 13 and 1 straight up and 9 and 5, 64.3 percent against the spread. And that applies to Marquette and Gonzaga on Friday. Great stuff there, uh, Dwayne. Uh, all right, guys, uh, quick reminder again, 
uh, teaming up with both Ralph and Dwayne, all access to both in March Madness. All of their plays, all yours, just 169. You can visit Ralph's page or Dwayne's page. It's it's on there. Get them both, just 169 with that code you see on the screen, MM169. We'll partner you up with both Ralph and Dwayne throughout March Madness, right through crowning a national uh, champion. Now, guys, a lot of different, and, and you both have said it, a lot of different trends, a lot of different angles here that you can approach what's about to happen here over the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, I'm going to ask you both to focus in on one that you think the viewers uh, should uh, should take a uh, maybe a little bit of a closer look, one that they should know about. Uh, Ralph, I'll start with you. I mean, give us one of these trends or angles you think that sticks out a little bit more. Joe, before I get to that, I want to give two quick notes. That special Dwayne and I have together, you look at the last two, three, and four years, we've been number one and number two at Wager Talk in March Madness. Yes, I've had one of my worst college basketball seasons ever, but when you get to this part of the postseason, it is an entirely different handicap, and I have complete confidence moving forward. Dwayne's got some incredible numbers. While I finished number three at Wager Talk last year, you look at the last two years combined, I'm number one in profit. Last three years combined, number one in profit. Last four years combined, number one in profit. And why get one of us for 149 when you can get both for just $20 more? And Joe, I'm going to uh, talk about a new system we haven't talked about on this show. And uh, let me just be honest. I stole this from my son. Uh, for those that don't know, Ooh. Jeff Michaels over at Sports Memo. His uh, Twitter is JM Sports C L E. He posted this, this this morning and it caught my eye and I want to share it with everyone here. In March Madness, if you take a team that is an underdog of six and a half or more and they won back to back to back games Ooh. by 10 points or more, so you have absolutely dominated your conference, you dominated your conference tournament, three straight wins by at least 10 points or more and now you're a dog of six and a half or more you've gone 16 and 2 89 percent against the spread since 2012 18 teams up to this year three teams apply so let's keep an eye on colgate plus the points against texas mm. vermont against the points plus the points against marquette and iona against the points about yukon Again, an 89% system. Fantastic uh, stuff. Boy, some intri all those games, very intriguing uh, on their own right there. So uh, good stuff there, Ralph. How about it, uh, Dwayne? Uh, give us one out the door here. Give us a trend or an angle here that sticks out to you a little bit. Uh, Ralph mentioned our special deal, and it really is a great deal. Um, he mentioned, you know, all the number ones in March Madness he's had. Um, the last uh, three years, I've been either number one. I've been number one in either win percentage or profit during March Madness. Uh, so me and Ralph are right there, neck and neck. Uh, you know, as far as success this time of year, this tournament. Uh, so it is a great deal. Like he said, why get one of us for one forty nine when you can get us both for twenty dollars more? Uh, as far as the scenario here, I mean, I talked about how teams fared in certain scenarios uh, heading into the tournament. Uh, now I want to talk about teams that have a couple games under their belt in the tournament. Uh, specifically, uh, teams that covered the spread in their first two NCAA tournament games and are now playing their third game in the tournament. So this is going to be mostly Sweet 16 teams, but it can also include second round teams that had to play a first four game. Uh, so were these teams able to cover a third straight game or did the law of averages come back to bite them? Well, it turns out these teams kept the money train rolling. Uh, they were 16 and 8, 67% against the spread over the last three tournaments, uh, but it gets better than that. Uh, in these same games, the under was an amazing 22 and two, 92% to the under. And these games weren't just sneaking in under the total. These games stayed under by an average of 10.3 points per game. And that even includes an overtime game in there that skewed that or that margin would have been even higher. Uh, you know, this is a scenario of a team playing its third tournament game after covering the first two, and it gets even better if our team is the underdog. Uh, the underdog in this scenario is 10 and 4, 71.4% ATS, 
and 13 and 1, 93% to the under. So that's something that you need to keep an eye on uh, for teams who cover their first uh, cover the spread in their first two uh, games in this tournament because there's money to be made in that third game as well. So uh, great stuff there. And uh, guys, there's so much more uh, where that comes from, both uh, Ralph and Dwayne. Obviously, when it comes to TNA, uh, nobody at Wager Talk is better uh, tuned in than these two guys. Take advantage of that opportunity. Couple of quick questions I'll just throw at you guys here um, from, uh, uh, from a handicapping perspective on how you take a look at this. And you talk, you know, Ralph, you mentioned databases, you mentioned all year on a college basketball show. Does including in your handicapping have anything to do with, how about coaches and their track record in, uh, in the tournament here? Uh, do you look at, no matter what happened in the regular season, do you look at like a Dana Altman and go, when it comes to March Madness, there's no denying how some of these coaches elevate their teams while others not so much. Does that come in at all when you look at it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, and Dwayne and I did a college basketball show last week on March Madness, and I think Dwayne can talk more about coaches than that. Uh, first rounds, I, I, I really don't look that much because the teams have played the entire season. I think the coaches come into play more after the first game. So um, first game, I don't really look at coaching records. I look at a team and current form and defense and the way they they finish the season. I look at last five, 10, and 20 games. Mm. Uh, but again, after the first game, I brought up that system and angle mm. because that one, that is one surprised me. Now, it doesn't necessarily equate that teams with one day rest playing that Saturday or Sunday game after playing Thursday, Friday, the better coach is not always the favorite. Mm. So there's no way to determine from the database if you have the better coach. You know, I, I wanted to give favorites to give some people idea, but I think coaching is imperative to look at after game one. How about you, uh, Dwayne? Do you, do you look at, at coaching matchups here and, and the history that some of these guys uh, have, whether an underdog or a favorite in March Madness? I do. And if I had known you were going to hit me with this one, I would have grabbed my notes in the downstairs right now. But uh, yeah, I do actually, uh, you know, keep track of the coaches and how their teams perform in the tournaments uh, as a favorite, as a substantial favorite, as an underdog uh, with totals. So yeah, I mean, that all is part of my handicap. And like Ralph said, I just did the college show last a week and I was actually mm -hmm. talking about uh, coaches and how their teams fare in the in the uh, conference tournaments as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this time of year, March, it definitely uh, coaches are definitely a factor in my handicap of these games. Love it, but you mean like Jamie Dixon, one in four straight up and against the number in his past five NCAA games as a favorite. I'm just throwing those kinds of things out there. That's what you can get by hanging out with Ralph and Dwayne over at wagertalk.com. Uh, one more quick, just want to get your thoughts because it, it keeps coming up. The transfer portal has changed the game. We're seeing a lot of guys retire, Ralph. I'm wondering, because there's a lot been made about parity in college basketball. You know, there's levels. There's the upper echelon, and then it seems like there's everybody else and there's not a lot separating a whole lot of teams would it shock you ralph if we got way more upsets this year than we have in years past because of this trickle down effect of guys are switching teams every every season here and that means the the talent is getting divided up more well you know umbc right knocked off virginia yeah. as the number one and i agree with you you know to go to the NBA 10 years ago, you had to go to one of the power schools. But, you know, Steph Curry has set the bar different, you know, and, and you look at Morant and teams like that in those mid-level teams, you now have stars going to teams. Howard had a five-star release, yeah. right? He got hurt and didn't play much. Eastern Michigan has a five-star release. So, yes, I think there's much more. Part of the reason those number one seeds are – eight and 12 ATS the first round the last five years is because there are so many better teams with so many solid players that don't have to go to major programs and be on TV to get love at the next level. So absolutely, Joe, great point. And, you know, we've seen some teams 
You know, uh, Duquesne was a six-win team last year. <laughs> no player return that played minutes. Five yep. freshmen, five transfers. And what do they do? They have a 20-win season this year. So it's completely changed the game. You know, it wouldn't shock you either, Dwayne, I'm guessing, if we see some of the mid-majors or some of these bottom half of these power five. It, it seems like the talent, it's such a level playing field with so many of these schools because of the talent's ability to jump ship and you don't have to go to Kentucky. You don't have to go to North Carolina. Uh, would you be shocked either if maybe this year we begin to see a trend of Welcome to the dogs here, uh, because a lot could be barking here this tournament. No, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at all uh, the way you explained that. Uh, but I got to be honest, at the same time, that's not even something I really even think about. I mean, when it comes to handicapping these games, man, I've got tunnel vision. Um, oh. I'm focused on the numbers I've got, uh, the projections that I get, uh, running my uh, database research to come up with, with edges here and there in each game. Uh, and that's I know I'm laser focused on that, you know, putting these games under the microscope. I'm I'm not even looking big picture like that. So, but the way you explained it, yeah, I mean, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. Twelve months from now, um, are the numbers going to be totally different? What's going to be this trend in the next two, three, four years? Uh, we may have to forget about everything that uh, that we thought was uh, relevant a decade ago because. It's a new day. It's a new era in college basketball. It's going to be a lot of fun to see how this all unfolds here. And uh, it's getting really hard to remember the name. Was like Ralph? How many times you go? Wait, wasn't he at Nebraska last year? Or like, <laughs> wasn't he? At, I could have sworn he was at Arkansas last year. So it's a different time in college hoops for sure, for better or for worse. Uh, we still have a ton of data, and nobody has got more than these two guys right now. So if you head over to wagertalk.com, uh, when it comes to TNA, these are two of the most profitable uh, during March Madness at Wager Talk. Visit both Dwayne Bryant and Ralph Michaels right now. Visit their pages at wagertalk.com. And uh, Ralph, Dwayne, appreciate it. Of course, we'll be back again uh, tomorrow there. We'll have uh, the crew back in. We'll start breaking down some of these games we got playing games of course uh, we have a pretty good idea of the numbers here with some of these uh, first round games all week long we're going to be breaking down and previewing these games so make sure you come back and join us until then on behalf of ralph and Dwayne, we appreciate the time as always guy best of luck with all the plays tonight we'll talk to you again tomorrow good luck Each and every Monday is $9 Monday at both wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com. When all daily picks packages are priced at only $9, including 5% best bets, normally priced at $35. As an added bonus, any picks packages loaded early for overnight Tuesday or action during the week will also be priced at nine bucks until midnight on Monday. So make sure to take advantage of getting these $25 and $35 picks for only $9 before the clock strikes 12 and they return to regular price.